Welcome to yet another edition of TV African News. Thank you so much for joining us and Dara is being part of us. This is Africa Today. My name is Nahama Kajira. But first, are the headlines. Ugandans abroad with phased out machine readable passports can still return home, says Internal Affairs. First batch of South Sudanese troops land in Eastern DRC. Senegalese opposition postpones April 3rd. Uh, protests. In a sports news today, Uganda matters dump out holders may carry to reach semi finals. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We start with one of our top stories. The Ministry of Internal Affairs has assured Ugandans abroad who are still holding machine readable passports, which have been phased out, that they can still ably return home to Uganda. The Ministry of Internal Affairs last week announced that the grace period for use of machine-readable passports that started over a year ago had elapsed and that anyone holding the documents cannot use them for travel, but rather electronic passports are the only documents allowed. Addressing journalists on Monday, Internal Affairs spokesperson Simon Peter Mondey said Ugandans abroad who are still in possession of machine-readable passports and are willing to return home can reach out the various embassies to issue them with emergency travel certificates to allow them travel back home. Mondey said that the ministry moved to clear the air after cries, especially on social media by a section of Ugandans abroad who said they could not return home since they still have the phased out machine readable passports. The ministry spokesperson said that Ugandans still holding the phased out machine readable passports can process the newly introduced electronic passports online and pick the travel documents at the various passport centers abroad. Well, thank you so much, your reporter. Moving on, in a top stories, the Forum for Democratic Change has highly criticized Uganda's continued deployment of UPDF. Troops in the embattled Democratic Republic of Congo saying it's a waste of taxpayers' money. Speaking at their party headquarters in Najanankumbi, John Chikonyogo, the deputy spokesperson of the FDC, tasked the parliament to explain to the country the benefits of deploying the armed national forces in the RSC. Kikonyogo's remarks came a week later after the command land forces Lieutenant General Kayanja Mohanga flagged off UPDF soldiers to the RSC and the East African Community Regional Force. However, according to FDC, Uganda is overspending taxpayers' money on the RSC without clear benefits, which the party says has dragged the country into accumulating dates. It is from this background that they suggested the two governments to come to negotiations on the date which Congo owes Uganda versus the military support extended to the latter. It should be noted that in March last year, fighting erupted between M23 rebels and the Congolese government forces and the former gained control of several parts in North Kivu, capturing Vunagana and Kitagoma border posts with Uganda in Kisoro district. Away from that, a first batch of South Sudanese soldiers arrived in Goma in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo on Sunday, 2nd April 2023. The group, at least uh, 45 soldiers, is joining a regional military force in the region blocked by the M23 rebellion. The Seven Nation East African Community Military Force was created last June. It is due to oversee the withdrawal of M23 fighters from Eastern DRC. Much of the region is plagued by dozens of armed groups, a legacy of regional wars that flared in 1990s and 2000s. Since re-emerging from Domas in late 2021, M23 rebels have captured swathes of territory in North Kivu province and advanced within several dozen kilometers of its capital Goma. Several regional initiatives intended to defuse the conflict, such as ceasefires, have failed to materialize. March 30th was supposed to mark the end of the withdrawal of all armed groups, according to a timetable adapted in mid-February by the East African community. Thank you so much, your reporter. We take a quick break. We shall come back with the international news.
Welcome back for the break. He's still watching TV Africa, the right to know. In international news, the politician and supporters of former Ivorian President Laurent Gbagbo, African People's Party celebrated the second anniversary of his final acquittal by the ICC following the 2010 post-electoral violence. Now, the party officials also attended the event in Abidjan. According to former Ivorian President Laurent Bago, March 31st is the date that put an end to justice when iniquity was erased and is the date when the, when the innocence of the innocent was recognized. According to the UN, at least 3,000 people were killed, around 1 million were displaced and over 300,000 refugees fled. In the wake of the violence that erupted after the election of 2010, Bago's rival and current president of Ivory Coast, Arasin Katara, took the post. During the so-called revival celebration, the former president, who is now 77, held his first major meeting since his return and the creation of the PPACI. Many supporters who came from all parts of Ivory Coast to attend the event eyed the 2025 presidential election. The meeting also provided an opportunity to take stock that Laurent Bago could form in the run up to 2025. Away from that, the Senegalese opposition announced on Friday that they would postpone risky demonstrations scheduled for Monday. Throughout the trial of politician Osman Sonko, tensions were high in the country. Citing broad consultations and contacts with senior members of defense and security forces, the opposition announced the news in a statement. According to a statement said to the media, the prefect of Dhaka banned the demonstration of Monday in the capital for risks of disturbance to public order. Protests in support of the opposition leader have been marred by clashes between law enforcement and demonstrators. The Yewi Askini We coalition had planned marches in Dhaka, among other cities, ahead and following the trial of Osman Sonko. The past TAF, a party leader, appeared in court on Thursday for defamation against the Minister of Tourism, Mame Mbaye Niang Sonko, and his supporters maintain his legal troubles are part of an effort by President Maki Sall's government to derail his candidacy in the 2024 presidential race. We take a quick break. shall come back with business, health and sports. <music> Talking matters business, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris toured the Panuku Farm in Chibombo District, Zambia on Saturday, 1st April 2023. 20, now, the farm outside the capital uses new techniques and technology to boost its vegetable crop. Our reporter has more. According to a White House communique, U.S. private sector made over $7 billion U.S. billion in new commitments after the VP's call for the sector to promote and enhance climate resilience, mitigation and adaptation across Africa. She said that the United States will continue to support and expand this work that includes hoping to improve climate modeling, weather forecast and to build new weather stations. If Africa has contributed far less to overall greenhouse gas emissions than economically richer corners of the world, it bears the brunt of the climate crisis. Kamala Harris will return to Washington on Sunday after a week-long trip to three African countries. In the geopolitical battle for influence, the Biden administration seeks to narrow a trust gap with Africa. He's 
so much reporter taking matters health the world health organization warned on friday that over 1 million people face the possibility of contracting cholera polio or covid 19 as a result of the after effects of cyclone freddy which displaced some 184,000 people in mozambique our reporter has more speaking from maputo the World Health Organization representative for Zimbabwe, Dr. Sivrin, say that while the cholera outbreaks regularly occur in Mozambique between October and April of every year with more than 21,000 cases currently and 95 deaths, this is the largest outbreak in the last 20 years. Mid-March cyclone Freddy damaged 163 health facilities, raising health risks. The World Health Organization representative detailed the fertility rate and commended the work of health professionals. Eight of the country's 11 provinces have been affected as cases continue to rise. The first vaccination campaign was launched in February. A new one kicked off on Thursday in the eastern city of Kwelimen, targeting 410,000 people. Cholera is an archidiarrheal infection. When severe, it is characterized by extreme watery diarrhea and potentially fatal dehydration. In a sports news today, Uganda Matters progressed to the semi-finals of this year's football women's cup after eliminating holders Makere University on Sunday. A 2-1 win at Makere Ground was enough to send Uganda Matters through the last four. It should be noted that the two teams faced off in the league at the same venue last week and Makere University were able to win 2-1. Therefore, Sunday's clash offered Uganda matters with the opportunity to revenge for the league defeat. Catherine Nagadi and Latifa Nakasi scored a goal each for the Kidawani Megaos, while Daphne Nalupowa got the consolation for the university team. Uganda matters will face Kawempe Muslim in the same finals. The latter obliterated Kampala Queens with a 5-1 win in Kabocha. The other semi-final will see a Suboga Ford ladies take on Shimaroons. The semi-finals are played on a home and away basis and FUFA will confirm the dates for the fixtures. It is this particular time that I thank you for joining us and always being part of us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We should keep updating you. It is TV Africa, the right channel.